Hello viewers, welcome to part 8 of our accounting fundamentals. So in the last session, we understood the golden rule and uh, we also discussed about how all those accounts of the company will have to pass through any one of this category. And we were talking about the gate, which is basically the golden gate. So just quickly to uh, recollect, let me just quickly uh, recall your uh, last class uh, session that we took an example, right? So uh, let's take just a minute. Right. So uh, we took an example, right? So we said uh, purchase of stationery for cash, okay, rupees 1000. Now, this is the example that we took. And we also discussed that uh, all our accounts, you know, just, just, just to quickly uh, recollect our memory, I had mentioned that all our accounts will roll up to four primary group, right? So that is a asset, liability, uh, expenses, and income. Now, under this also, we saw the example where there are various subgroups and groups under those subgroups, right? And we also understood uh, the, the, the uh, function of a group and a ledger. And we, we said that, you know, I mean, like every company, irrespective of any number of ledgers they have, whether it is 100 ledgers or whether it is 10,000 ledgers, we said that they have to pass through this three golden gate. That is one gate. Number one is basically called as a personal category. Then the other one is your real category. And the third one is your nominal category. Now we understood what is personal account and we also know uh, how to identify a ledger or an account as a personal real or nominal right and i said every account so we also discussed that every transaction will have minimum two ledgers that is there has to be one ledger for the debit side and there has to be another ledger for the credit side right so the question that we were we were uh, uh, you know pondering upon in the last cl class is that okay fine now i've uh, identified a particular ledger now let's take a case of uh, this transaction now in this transaction uh, we have identified a ledger called stationery as my ledger 1 okay and we have identified a ledger called cash which is my second ledger, okay? So now, so we said, okay, identify the ledger and see whether this ledger is going to pass through any one of this gate, all right? So now let's say that stationary account, we have taken stationary account, we have identified this ledger, stationary account. So what did we understood in the previous session is that, okay, if this ledger is there, it has to be either personal account in nature or it has to be real account in nature, or it has to be a nominal account. Now let us take stationery. A stationery basically in an organization you buy for, you know, I mean, for the office use or for various other, you know, I mean like office activities and uh, maintenance purpose, right? So we know that, you know, per purchase of purchasing of this stationery item is basically an indirect expenses, right? So. Now, if you, okay, we know that the stationary account is an indirect expenses. So now let's pass through and see uh, from which gate it is going to pass through. Okay, is it personal account? No, it is not a personal account. Is it real account? No, it is not a real account because it is an expenses in nature, right? Then is it nominal account? Yes, it is nominal account. So this stationary is now going to pass through this gate of nominal account because we understood in the previous session. Very good. Now let us take the second ledger. The second ledger is a cash ledger. Okay. Now cash ledger, cash is my asset. And we discussed, there is an example. Uh, you can see this on the slide. 
So cash, generally real account are your assets, majority of your assets, and also which are real in nature where you can touch them and feel them. So cash is my asset for the organization. It is a real account. I can touch them and feel them. So cash account is going to pass through very simple. It is easy to identify. Cash account is going to pass through this gate of real account. Excellent, right? So we have cracked the uh, problem. So fine. So this has come out stationary. This has come out from here. This is my stationary account, right? And this is my cash account. Now the big question that hits our mind is that, okay, I've identified the two ledger. I know that cash is a real account and I know that now a stationary account is a nominal account, but which ledger to credit, which ledger to debit? It's a big question, right? So the golden rule now is what, because once you identify an account to which category they belong to, then you apply the rule because the golden rule specifically says if you identify a personal account under what instance or under what type of nature of transaction you need to debit or credit. Similarly, if you identify an account as a real account, when will you debit a real account and when will you credit a real account. If you identify an account as a nominal account, when will you uh, debit the nominal account ledger and when will you credit a nominal account ledger? So this is the question. Now, this is where the golden rule is now going to tell you and it is very important for us to understand this. Like I mentioned, this is the foundation of our accounting, right? Once we understand this, then accounting becomes very easy, very simple, and you can always, uh, you know, maintain your books of account error free. And at the same time, you know, th these, uh, I mean, like interesting thing is that, you know, these, these fundamentals of accounts are actually imbibed inside tally. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, validation and there are a lot of uh, intelligence built in tally. When we come to tally, uh, I, I, I'll refer to this golden rule and, uh, uh, you know, I mean, like uh, we will see how tally also makes sure that uh, the user is not going to uh, commit a fundamental uh, error during the voucher entry or capturing the data in tally. Okay, so we will see that. So now let's crack this problem. What is the problem that we have? I don't know, should I have to debit stationary or credit? And similarly, the cash account, should I have to debit or credit, right? So now the golden rule says, don't worry. I will tell you when will you debit and when will you credit based on the nature of transaction or based on the uh, nature of the incident that has occurred in this transaction. So let's see. So the first thing, it says, the golden rule says, if you identify a ledger as a personal account, then it says, debit the receiver, okay? And credit the giver. Now, here is where it is very important for every one of us to, uh, you know, keep in mind that how do we interpret? So when it says debit the receiver, from which point of view are we going to interpret this statement? Or credit the giver, from which point of view we are going to interpret the statement? Now, this is very important. Like I've been mentioning in my previous session, every transaction that you're going to capture for this organization, you have to see the impact from the point of view of the organization. So if I could take that uh, uh, stance, then you have to interpret like this, debit the receiver. So as a company, if I'm giving to somebody, if it's a personal account, you debit the person who's receiving from you, okay? Credit the giver. So you credit the personal account or credit a person when he is giving you. So it's very simple. When you are giving, debit it. When you are receiving, credit it. Uh, I hope uh, this is simple. But for initially people from non-commerce background, it will be a little uh, kind of a puzzle or a riddle. So don't worry. We will. I will, in, in, uh, I will be explaining more with examples so that it will be more uh, clearer for all of you. Okay. So this is what the 
personal account says. Okay, so now what does the real account say? The real account golden rule says, debit what comes into your company. So we know real account is all my asset or those are the accounts which are physical in nature where we can touch and feel them. So the rule says, very simple, whatever is coming into your company, you debit it. So example, we took the example cash. When cash is coming into your company, you debit it. When money is getting deposited in the bank, you debit it. When when the stock value is going up, you are debiting it. Okay. When you are uh, 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 taking a deposit or when you are taking a, uh, some fixed asset, right? So that your money from the bank gets converted into some kind of a deposit or investment. So you are going to debit it whenever it is coming in, right? And when 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 machinery you are buying machinery, machinery is coming in, so you are going to debit, right? Then it says credit what goes out. So when cash is going out of your company, credit it. When his money is going from the bank, credit it. Right. So this is where you basically you will do. Uh, basically, you will interpret the uh, transaction. So for real account, you have to see the moment you identify a ledger, you have to see now this ledger. If it is a real account, then what is coming in? If if something is coming in, then I have to debit it. If something is going out, then I'm going to credit it. Okay. So this is my second golden rule. And the third golden rule is very simple. Right. So the third golden rule says that if you identify a particular ledger as a nominal account, and if it is in the nature of expenditure for your organization, then you debit it. So it says, the golden rule says debit all expenses and losses. Okay. Obviously, the credit has to be credit all your income uh, or gains, right? So if you make a sale, sale is an income for you, you would be crediting sale. If you make a purchase uh, uh, for uh, purchase of goods for uh, selling purpose, then uh, it becomes it becomes your expenditure and and i i'm sure that you would recall that in one of our previous session i had discussed about how do we arrive at the closing stock and what is the logic behind arriving at the closing stock why do we need to arrive at the closing stock because that is the stock that is uh, left uh, unsold during the end of the financial year right now because we are debiting my entire purchase as my expenditure the unsold stock becomes my uh, asset because you know i'm holding that stock so that is where we, i had explained about how you arrive at the closing stock and what is the uh, you know functionality of uh, you know i mean like capturing the closing stock in your financial statement right so you are buying something so it is your expenditure Right. So this is your golden rule. Now, let us quickly go to our example and see and apply this golden rule and see how does this fit in and whether it will now, whether this golden rule, rule will now help me in uh, passing this transaction. Right. So first step I have already done. I have identified this two ledger. Now I know my stationary account is a nominal account. So, okay, let me just quickly write here. Okay, so we'll say my stationary account is a nominal, I have identified this as a nominal account and my cash account I have identified as a real account. Excellent. Now, let's take the first uh, uh, ledger, stationary account. Okay, stationary account is an expenditure for my organization. Like I said, it is very easy. Uh, it, it, I mean, like it's just common sense and logic for us to identify uh, any nature of ledger as an expenditure for an organization. Like I also mentioned earlier that, you know, I mean, like, you know, in our daily life, we know what, what is an expenditure from a, from a household uh, uh, maintenance of accounts and from a personal experience, right? So stationary is an expenditure for my organization. So it's a nominal account. Now let us apply the rule and see what does the nominal account rule says. The nominal account rule says debit all expenses. Now stationery is an expenditure for me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to debit. It is very simple. See, the golden rule has helped me to capture the transaction properly 
uh, as per the double entry system of accounting. So I am going to now debit stationary account by thousand rupees. And obviously, there are only two ledgers. So we know that there are two sides to it, right? So one ledger you need to debit and the other one you need to credit. So obviously, the next ledger is going to be my credit because I've debited stationary. I'm going to credit cash by 1000 rupees but let's run through uh, this rule and see whether you know this rule uh, fits into this uh, credit uh, what we have done okay so cash is what cash is a real account now that is what we uh, identified so let's apply the rule of uh, real account what does the real account say the real account says debit what comes in credit what goes out now when i'm buying stationery by paying cash, then cash is going out of my organization. So cash ledger is a real account. So because cash is going out of my organization, I am going to credit cash, right? So stationery is debited, cash is credited. So this is how every transaction needs to be captured as per our double entry system of accounting. Like I said, initially it might be a little difficult. It is, it's, it's like uh, we learning cycling or driving or swimming. Initially, it is going to be difficult, and then as you keep, uh, you know, working on this and as you keep practicing, as long as you understand this fundamental concept, then it becomes second nature over a period of time. And and believe me, just pass about 20, 30 transactions, right? The moment you pass about 20, 30 transactions. I, I, you will never believe that accounts is so simple and uh, you will be surprised that, you know, you have, you have never done accounting in your life. You will be surprised that, oh my God, I'm able to now pass accounting entry, right? So it is that simple, okay? So you have to, you know, understand this golden rule. So important thing that every ledger is going to pass through these three golden gates. One is personal account, real account, nominal account. And also each rule says that if you identify your personal account, see the in incident of the transaction, whether the person is giving you or whether the person is receiving. So do it accordingly, right? Now, in case of real account, we know what is coming in, what is going out, okay? Nominal account, expenditure and income, right? So this, this is the secret of our accounting if you are comfortable with this and if you are able to uh, you know remember this and uh, you know i mean if you are able to you don't have to really memorize it but then you know you if you just understand this logic then it becomes easy for you to capture the transaction now quickly uh, very important so what I would want to uh, do here in this slide is basically I'm just going to get a quick recap and uh, and it is it is uh, if you feel that you know I mean like uh, you would want to you know make a note of this and then you know maybe you can uh, you know write down and then you know uh, put it in front of your desk because as long as you are comfortable with accounts this is very important for you okay so this is the formula that you should know to crack your accounting problem. Okay. So at a glance, we, we saw the golden rule uh, where the golden rule is dividing all your accounts into three categories. One, it says that your accounts are in personal in nature. So if, if, even if you identify a ledger as personal account, then the rule says debit the receiver, credit the giver. Okay. If you identify a ledger as a real account, then the rule says, yes, correct. Yes debit what comes in credit what goes out right and the third one if it is not personal in nature if it is not real in nature then it has to be nominal in nature if it is nominal in nature the rule says debit all expenses credit all income okay so this is an important formula that uh, all of you need to you know at least you know uh, remember this or if you if you find it difficult to remember i'm sure that you know when uh, during my college days you know uh, i i even i used to struggle this you know i mean like you know we used to memorize and for you to be an expert accountant if somebody wakes you up at the middle of the night and asks you the golden rule you should be in a position to you know i mean like give this rule Right. So it's that important for you to capture proper accounting transaction. Okay. Now, quickly, I will take three examples to give you more clarity on 
uh, how you will interpret this rule and how you will apply the rule so that you know the transaction that you are capturing is as per the accounting standards right so now see this also see uh, accounts is you know both you know it it is a science and also it is an art right so uh, like you have your algebra problem where you need to solve this problem step by step okay similarly okay uh, in 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 uh, passing a transaction also you have three steps to follow you should remember this once you follow these three steps then your accounting uh, transaction that you are capturing is going to be perfect right so first let me take the first example the account the transaction is like this for the organization so it is the same example which i had uh, taken earlier right so purchase of stationary item for rupees 1000 and paid cash so now we all of us know that which ledger to be debited which ledger to be credited but here i am going to show you that what are the three steps that is involved for you to systematically pass the transaction right so step 1 is that you have to identify the two ledger that are involved in the transaction now again if you recall it is not necessary that every time in a transaction there has to be two ledger only there could be multiple ledger also which means you can have two or three debit ledgers maybe you might have one or two credit ledgers but the most important thing that you have to remember which we had discussed earlier is that the total of your three ledger on the debit side should match to the total of the credit whether it is a single ledger whether it is two ledgers or three ledgers the total has to match okay total has to match it, it is not necessary that your debit ledger a if it is 100 your credit ledger uh, b needs to be 100 no it could be any value but the overall total of your voucher should match to the total debit and total credit okay so identify the two ledger that are involved the two ledger is basically i need to identify one ledger for debit side and i need to identify another ledger for my credit side so identify the two ledger that are involved in the transaction now let us take this example and let us identify the two ledgers in this transaction so my first ledger that i have identified is a stationary account okay now the nomenclature that you give for your ledger depends on organization to organization the whole idea behind creating a ledger name should be such that every person who is looking into that account should have an idea of what is the nature of that ledger so stationary some people might call printing and stationery some people might call office uh, supplies it doesn't matter as long as the people in your organization are able to comprehend uh, what is this ledger and what impact it has on your financial statement so you can call it as printing and stationery or whatever it is so my stationery ledger so my stationery ledger is what if i pass through this three golden gates my stationery ledger is a okay we'll come to that so then i have identified ledger number 1 which is stationery identified my ledger number 2 which is my cash account so this is my step number 1 step number 2 what are we supposed to do after you have identified the two ledger now you have to identify to which category they belong to right so stationery belongs to which category yes very good stationery belongs to nominal account right and cash yes belongs to real account right so i have completed step number 2 also what is my step number 3 step number 3 is apply the rule what is the nominal account rule say what is the real account rule say right so now my nominal account rule says debit all expenses so stationery is an expenditure for my organization right so i am now creating a ledger called printing and stationery now i know that i have to debit this ledger as per the golden rule i am debiting 1000 rupees right then my cash account cash account is a real account okay now real account rule says debit what comes into your company credit what goes out of your company 
So cash is going out of your company by buying stationery. So cash account will be credited by 1000 rupees. That's all. And that simple it is for you to capture the transaction. So important thing is that you need to read the transaction properly and identify the impact of the ledger. Okay. So I, I hope this uh, again would give you more clarity on understanding the, uh, you know, application of the rule of uh, uh, each of the ledger. Okay. So now let me take the second example of the same nature. Okay. Now in this example, if you see, uh, read the transaction, like I said, you know, I mean, like interpreting the transaction is very, very important and very, very critical. Okay. Now in this case, it says the transaction says or the, the transaction goes like this purchase of stationary item for 1000 rupees from A to Z stationary. Right now, it is the same thing. Okay. If you see the example one and example two, but there is a change or there is a difference that has happened here. Now, what is the change that has happened here? If you see the transaction here, it says you have purchased stationery for 1000 rupees from A to Z stationery. So that means you have not made payment to this person. It very clear. It's a clear indication that this purchase of stationery, you have purchased it on credit. Okay, So there is no cash outflow. So now let us now uh, take this example with this understanding, with this clarity. We will now take this example and then, you know, pa you know, run through this three step and see how do we capture the transaction. So the step one says, identify the two ledgers involved in the transaction. So now reading the transaction, we know that we have already identified stationary account is one ledger. So we have already identified stationary account, right? And then... Uh, A to Z account is the other ledger. Now, why am I identifying A to, Z, A to Z stationary as my second ledger? Because I'm not making a payment through cash or through a bank, right? So now in this case, I have to identify the second ledger, the person. Okay, A to Z is very clear that it's a personal account, right? So I have to identify this so that at later point in time, if I have to make payment to him, I need that person's information in my books of account so that I know how much of money needs to be paid to him, right? So that is why in this case, there are two ledgers. One is my stationary account. Other one is my A to Z account. What does the golden rule says? Identify the category they belong to first, right? So Again, we have identified stationery as a nominal account. Now, this is a new one. A to Z stationeries, right? So A to Z stationery is what category they belong to. So it is a personal account, right? So we have identified this as a personal account. Now the rule three, uh, step three of the rule says apply the rule, okay? So we have already done this earlier, printing and stationery. We have done this. So printing and stationary account, what are we going to do? We are going to debit, right? So we are going to debit printing and stationary, 1000 rupees, right? And uh, now you are going to credit. So obviously if you have debited stationary, A to Z has to be credited. Now let us run through the rule and validate and see whether it is in accordance with the rule. So A to Z we have identified as a personal account. So what is the golden rule of personal account says? Debit the receiver credit the giver. So who is giving you stationery? A to Z is giving you stationery. And that is why you are now crediting A to Z stationery so that at later point in time, now this is a liability. Okay. So you remember earlier I had mentioned that all your liability will by default carry a credit balance, right? So A to Z stationery, you have to pay money at a later point in time. Okay. That is why you are crediting him. And because it is a credit, it is your liability. Okay. So you are now crediting A to Z, right? So this is how you interpret the transaction and do it. Now quickly, I will take the third example and we will see uh, what, what, twist this example <laughs> brings to all of you. Okay. So now the third example is like this purchase of stationary item for 1000 rupees 
from A to Z stationery and paid cash. Okay, so let's let's go through the step. Step number one: identify the two ledgers that are involved in the transaction. Now, by looking at our previous two example, when you when you read this particular uh, transaction. suddenly you know you 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 seems to be identifying three ledgers right because we have done this exercise earlier so one of the three ledgers that it seems to be uh, being uh, uh, available in this particular transaction one is my stationery account then there is this a to z stationery now again this cash is also come right so three ledgers are there so what is so what is going to be my debit ledger what is going to be my ledger and i am saying identify the two ledger involved in the transaction in fact the clue is also given in this example it says identify the two ledger involved in the transaction right so now let's see okay let's see quickly let let me see how many of you are able to identify yes stationery is very easy okay and what is my second ledger yes many of you would have identified cash and some of you have would have identified uh, a to z stationery as your second ledger now very important again if you recollect our uh, previous session i had made a statement that you know i mean like every transaction that you are going to capture in your books of account should have an impact or it should have an implication to your business right now read this transaction the transaction says purchase of stationery item for rupees 1000 rupees from a to z stationery and you have paid cash right so in this case if you see stationery yes it is my expenditure is it is impacting my financial statement what is the second ledger my second ledger is a cash ledger because cash is going out it is going to impact my financial statement but then what do i do with a to z stationery you don't have to do anything it is just an information now you can capture that information in the narration so what is the impact stationery is an expenditure it is an impact cash is going out it is an impact right so a to z is just an information for you to say that from where you have purchased the stationery so this doesn't have any impact because you have already paid money to a to z so you don't have to pay him anything so in this example you really don't have to have a ledger created in his name right but in the previous example we did not make the payment to him that is why we credited a to z stationery in this example it is only two ledgers which is having an impact one is your stationery other one is your cash account right now i am sure that all of you know it is very easy very simple to do this right so identify the category they belong to we know stationery is a nominal account cash is a real account and yes apply the rule we know the rule now we are comfortable now right printing a stationery account you are debiting and yes you are going to credit your cash account okay so i hope you know i mean like this uh, three example will give you an idea of how to interpret and how to identify the transaction because the same example i have taken giving you three different uh, you know ways of capturing information and uh, i am sure that you would have understood that how do you identify the ledger which is going to impact your financial statement or which is going to impact your books of accounts now very important slide right now this one slide of account matrix is is the master slide which will give you a complete understanding of your accounting uh, matrix right so we struggled 5 years right so 3 2 years of uh, 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 you know in, in karnataka we call this as puc pre university okay so Two years of PUC, three years of degree. We studied this whole thing. So five years it took for us to understand. Uh, and I hope in 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 the last one hour or so, uh, 
this session and the previous session you would have understood the the the, the fundamentals of uh, accounting so this is this is the master slide so whatever you remember don't remember uh, really don't worry now make sure that you know you are able to capture this information again along with the golden rule if you are able to take this matrix and put it in front of your desk you will be very comfortable passing the accounting transaction right so this is like the summary of our fundamentals of accounting so we have seen this multiple times the moment you see this four box you know what what is what does this four box mean right so all our accounts have four primary group that is liabilities assets income and expenses right and we also know that each one of this primary group will carry a default balance because of the double entry system of accounting right so liabilities and income carry credit balance right so all liability is credit income is credit balance yes and once these two accounts have credit balance it is obvious that the other two account is going to have debit balance so asset will carry a debit balance expenses will carry a debit balance right so now this is our four uh, primary group which will have branches of hundreds of ledgers right and in the previous session uh, and earlier here also we understood the the concept of the golden gate and the golden rule so what what they made what the accounting master it says irrespective of whether the number of ledgers that you have 100 or 10000 it has to pass through these three golden gates what are these three golden gates right so the first gate is called the personal account right and we now know how to identify a ledger as a personal account okay the second type of gate is if it is not if the if, if a ledger is not eligible to pass through the personal account gate then see whether it is eligible to pass through a real account gate right and we also understood what is a real account and uh, what are the examples of real account and we also now know if it is a personal account when to debit when to credit and again as a real account we know when to debit when to credit and the third gate is nominal account so if it is not passing through real account then it has to be a nominal account and we also know the rule of nominal account when to debit a nominal account ledger and which ledger or when to credit a nominal account ledger right so now we said we have two financial uh, statement one is your balance sheet one is your pnl account right so now we also know that you know asset liability is part of my balance sheet income and expenditure is my profit and loss account right but then these three types of account which is personal in nature real in nature and nominal in nature right so which type of ledger will go to which financial statement is again a big question right so this gives you a clarity that every ledger which is personal in nature or real in nature will form part of your balance sheet so which means all your personal account and your real account will be part of your balance sheet and yes of course income and expenditure okay it's very clear right income expenditure should form part of my profit and loss account right so this is this is the uh, you know summary of our whole accounting fundamentals and matrix four major group three categories two financial report and two types of default balances one is credit balance the other one is your debit balance right so i hope and uh, uh, okay before that uh, this this basically brings to uh, the 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 end of our uh, fundamentals of accounting session and uh, from the next session onwards we will be covering uh, the tally aspect of it right so i hope uh, you know this whole fundamentals of business and processes and the fundamentals of accounting uh, would have given you more clarity on understanding how 
the real world uh, you know system works uh, by understanding these fundamentals right and uh, i hope this uh, must have given you more clarity on the uh, you know the golden rule of accounting and now uh, you will be more comfortable and it will be much easier for you to now uh, interpret and then you know i mean like pass a transaction now you are you have more clarity of uh, when a ledger is going to be debited when a ledger is going to be credited and all those things and this accounts matrix is one thing which is really really will help you uh, for longer time till you are comfortable with this right so thank you all uh, once again for being till the end and uh, as usual if you have not subscribed kindly subscribe if you like it kindly press the like button you can share these uh, uh, videos to your friends and colleagues so that they can also get benefited so the next session we will be introducing we will be getting into tally and uh, very very interesting uh, you know i mean like uh, things that we will learn in tally so thank you all very much uh, until we meet till the next session Thank you once again. Thank you.